but to take across your fathers and mothers from seven lives past and own your close relatives as well. The Dharma Assembly, which com commemorates the way in which the assembled Sangha helped save Mao Galayana's mother, is called Bumbumbana Sutra. Ananda, don't you know that now in this assembly there is a Aniruddha who is blind and yet can see, the dragon Upananda who is deaf and yet can hear, the spirit of the Ganges River who has no nose and yet smells fragrance, Gavampati who has an unusual tongue and yet senses a flavor, and the spirit of Shunyata who has no body and yet is aware of contact. In the light of the first come one, this spirit is illumined temporarily as an ethereal essence without any substance. In the same way, there is also Mahakashyapa in this assembly, dwelling in the Samadhi of distinction, having obtained the stillness of a sound hearer. He has long since extinguished the mind organ, and yet he has a perfectly clear knowledge which is not due to the mental process of thinking. Commentary Ananda, do you know that now in the assembly, in the Suragama Dhamma assembly, there are people who possess, who possess the mutual functioning of the six organs. One is Aniruddha, you remember him? He was the one who went blind trying to stay awake. Aniruddha was the Buddha's cousin, the son of the white rice king. He liked to sleep and he fell asleep every time the Buddha lectured the sutra. The Buddha scolded him for this habit, saying, Hey, hey, how can you sleep like an oyster or a clam? Sleep, sleep for a thousand years, but you'll never hear the Buddha's name. After that scolding, in a burst of zeal, Aniruddha didn't sleep for seven days and nights. He finally went blind from lack of sleep. The Buddha took pity on him and taught him the Samadhi of delight in seeing the illuminating brightness. Upon cultivating this dharma, he obtained the penetration of the heavenly eye. His ordinary eyes were useless, but he became foremost in the heavenly eye. This, his heavenly eye was perfect. He could see everything very clearly. You shouldn't think that opening one's eyes is the same in all cases. Some people see things clearly and some not so clearly. Aniruddha saw the most clearly of all. Here in the text, the Buddha reminds Ananda of Aniruddha who is blind and yet can see. Aniruddha's name means free of poverty, Wu Pin. I have told you before how he obtained a golden rabbit when he cut off one of its legs to buy food with. He found that another golden leg grew back in its place. Every time he removed a section of the golden rabbit, the section grew back and so he was never poor again. The Buddha also mentions the dragon Upananda, who is deaf and yet can hear. This dragon spirit protects the city of Magadha. Watching also the winds and rains are in accord with the season. He was well liked by the people of that city, and that's why he has the name Upananda, well liked, Shan Kwansi. Also deaf, this dragon could listen with his whiskers, whiskers instead of his ears. So Aniruddha didn't use his eyes and yet could see, and Upananda didn't have the use of his ears and yet could hear. This is the mutual functioning of the six organs that I've been discussing. There is also the spirit of the Ganges River who has no nose and yet smells the fragrance. The Ganges the Sindhu, the Vashru, and the Sato rivers all rise in the Himalayas. This river spirit of the Ganges has no nose, but she can still smell things. She uses her eyes to smell with. There is a Gavampati who has an unusual tongue and yet senses flavor. 
Gavan Baptist name means uh, cow cut new sea. Even when he wasn't eating, he kept chewing his gut and breathing coarsely like a cow. Why would someone who had been certified to the fusion of a hardship have such a habit? Is the result of something that happened to him when he was on the course ground as a novice? At that time, he con- uh, cultivated with an old monk who was who was certified as an arhat, but who, in his old age, had lost his teeth and, as a consequence, ate very slowly. He chewed so slowly that one day Gavampati, the novice, said to him, "You eat like a cow." It was because of that one sentence that he had to undergo the retribution of chewing his cut like. A cow for life after life, but now he had been certified to the fusion of Ahashi, so the Buddha instructed him to reside in the heavens rather than in the human realm, for fear that someone would slander him in turn and say, "You eat like a cow," with the result that another person would end up having to be a cow for life after life. This should show you how careful you must be when you talk. You can't just say whatever pops into your head. If you say one wrong thing, you fall in accordance with the laws of cause and effect. There once was an elder bishop whom one,、uh, someone asked, "Do great cultivators fall in accordance with cause and effect?" The elder cultivator replied, "Great cultivators do not fall in accordance with cause and effect, because of that one sentence was incorrect." He had to undergo rebirth as a fox for five hundred lives. When Chen Master Bai Chang was on Changxi lecturing the sutras, there was an old man with a long beard who came to listen every day. No one knew who he was. He always left as soon as the lecture was over. The lectures were all open to the public, of course, so no one asked him who he was. He was free to come and go with everyone else. In lecturing sutras, the rule is for the drama master to return to his room immediately after he finishes lecturing. He should engage in conversation very rarely, lest he end up seeking advantage from conditions. He should not linger after the lecture in order to invite people to come back again or the like. One day, when then when Chen Master Bai Chang was returning to his quarters. After the lecture, the old man with the long beard followed him and asked for instruction. His question was, "Does a great cultivator fall in accordance with cause and effect?" Chen Master Bai Chang answered, "Great cultivators are not unclear about cause and effect." The old man immediately became enlightened. "Oh, so that's the way it is," he explained. Then he explained. I am a fox who lives on the mountain behind here. Every day I come to listen to the sutras, but I've never understood this principle. Then he explained that in the past he had been a high monk who had also lectured the sutras. But when someone had asked him that question, he had answered incorrectly, and as a result he had to undergo five hundred lives as a fox. Now that today I have finally understood. Tomorrow I will go be reborn. You could come back to my cave and bury my corpse in order to establish affinities. The next day, Chen Master Bai Chang, taking all the monks from the monastery with him, went back on the mountain to have a look. Sure enough, they found the corpse of an old fox. Chen Master Bai Chang buried it with a ceremony used for monks and crossed him over. This is another example of how careful one must be in what one says. People who don't understand the principles of Buddha Dharma tend to say whatever they feel like. But people who study the Buddha Dharma know better than to do that. If someone asks you a question and you know the answer in terms of Buddha Dharma, you can reply. But if you don't know, I exhort you not to think you know when you don't. If you say something wrong, the effect will be severe. Because of one careless remark to an arhat, Gavampati had to bear the retribution of chewing his cud like a cow for life after life.
His tongue was like a gauze too. Nevertheless, he sensed flavor. There is the spirit Shunyata, who has no body and yet is aware of contact. Shunyata means emptiness. This emptiness spirit has no physical body and yet senses touch. How does that happen? In the light of the first common, this spirit is illumined temporarily as an ethereal essence without any substance. The light of the Buddha enables this spirit to appear temporarily, even though she is as empty as the wind and has no body at all. But when she is able to appear through the Buddha's power, she too can experience the sensation of contact. That makes the spirit Shunyata very happy. I really don't have a body, a body, but now I've got one. Beings are afraid of being without a body. And so when this spirit is allowed to manifest, she is delighted. In the same way, there is also Mahakashyapa in this assembly, dwelling in the Samadhi of extinction. This is the ninth successive stage of Samadhi, the extinction of the skandhas of thought and feeling. He had obtained the stillness of a sound hearer. Some members of the assembly had put an end to the skandhas of feeling and thought, and some had been certified as having attained the fruition of Ahashi, who in the assembly has obtained the samadhi of extinction. Maha means great and refers to the elder Kashyapa, who had used to be a fire worshipper. In Buddhism, he is known as the golden ascetic Qin Si Xian. He is now in Samadhi in China at Qi Tzu Mountain in Yunnan province. He hadn't died and gone off to rebirth. He is in the Samadhi of Extinction and in the future, when Maitreya Bodhisattva appears in the world, Mahakashyapa will present him with the robe and bow of Shakyamuni Buddha. He's been in Samadhi now for some 3,000 years, but one can sit for thousands or even tens of thousands of years in that Samadhi without any problem. He has long since ex extinguished the mind organ and yet he has a perfectly clear knowledge which is not due to the mental process of thinking. His discriminating mind, which is subject to the production and extinction of thoughts, was long ago put to an end, yet his knowledge is complete and sharp. It does not result from thoughts in the mind, but springs from his fundamental wisdom.